Good show. So today we'll be talking about me. I'll be a panelist at Eternal Con in Long Island, New York, this coming weekend, August 7th and August 8th. I'll be there on August 7th, but Eternal Con is the entire weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. How wonderful is that, right? Today, while I discuss Eternal Con, I'll also be drawing Cyborg. Cyborg is one of the first African-American superheroes in DC Comics Eternal or Extended Universe, I should say. I'm all about this eternal thing, right? So I'll be drawing um, Cyborg and I want you to follow along as I do so. So watch, how about it? I sketch some of the things that I enjoyed about hmm, Ray Fisher. I'll go with him before I go with the character that he played. Is I enjoyed Ray Fisher as Cyborg. He will be Ray Fisher will actually be at Eternal Con this weekend as one of the celebrities in the building. And, you know, I enjoy the role played. When you listen to some of the interviews that Ray Fisher gave, he talks about differently able. The term alone is so powerful. You know, cyborg is half man, half machine. You know, it was like, oh my God. I was a star football player at my high school, and then my scientific father had to save me. And in doing so, robotics, mechanical, mechanics, um, was the savior for him to make him a differently abled individual. And I enjoy that, right? Now, with being that uh, I, I also feel as though Ray Fisher is a different person showing his ability because a lot of people may know, a lot of people may not know, but Ray Fisher has, you know, some things going on that aren't too pleasant with Warner Brothers and they are putting on hold the growth of the cyborg character. And with that, um, you know, I, I have a lot of Obama hope, and I say that all the time. You know, Obama was like the president in America who created the hashtag of hope so gigantic that I too feel like everything connected to hope was brought to me by the magnificent um, President Obama, right? So with that being said, I hope that Cyborg, Cyborg grows. I hope that his character grows and that more comes, um, more episodes, more movies, a actual movie that is dedicated to the Cyborg character is grown in the DC Extended Universe. That's my hope. So as some people say, no, it's not going to happen. Mm -mm. Of course not. I say, I hope it happens. I have a good feeling that they're going to work these things out and growth will happen between them. You know, um, there was some racism going on within the leadership of Warner Brothers and Ray Fisher spoke out about it. And, you know, right now, this is the time to speak up and speak out on things that are not comfortable. And in that same moment, some people may take accountability, need or want accountability to be taken, or some will ignore. I think that Ray Fisher is showing how he has that ability to speak out on wrongdoing, on discomfort, especially in race relations with this Ray Fisher versus Warner Brothers um, issue. 
I hope that it can be resolved and that growth and equality, especially in equity, um, be reached. I want to meet him, I hope, on Saturday while I am a panelist on at Eternal Con so that, you know, of course I could be like, oh wow, you're such a great guy, you know, your mission, and, uh, you're, you're really a great actor, of course you stole the show um, in Justice League, but even still beyond your character, your actual humane is magnificent as well. So I want to be able to actually say that to him while I'm at Eternal Con in, um, in New York. You know, Ray Fisher is actually from New Jersey. I'm here in Philly and people will be a traveling bunch, right? And I hope that, you know, being in the tri-state will help the connection and, you know, um, you know like my artwork because of course I'm going to show it to him. And I drew you and I'm just like such an excited artist fan and I hope you like my illustration of you and that you draw it and by the way I was a panelist and you know the conversation just kind of ends there and you know the awkward moment is fine and dandy and over with but um you know definitely I want to give people their flowers while they're here so I want to be capable and hopefully allowed to give Ray Fisher his feathers for standing up as well as taking on this role as a cyborg um, and you know speaking on and making sure that his character's role connects to people who are differently able because that's really important representation matters in so many ways and a lot of times in character development it may be overlooked on the realities on some of the different traits that come along with um, the creation. So I was really, really excited to, you know, both illustrate him as well as I'm really, really excited of him being in the same place as I'll be this coming weekend. I am not sure if I'm going to meet him, but these are like my, I hope, Obama hashtag it um, that I will be able to meet him and say some of these things or at least you know my YouTube video will get to him if I don't because I have hope and in hope you have like a few different plans on how a plan will manifest itself so there's that uh, so I'm I think I'm coming along with my sketch so far so let me talk about what my role will be in Eternal Con. I don't know if you've seen on Comic Book School, but if you have not visited, please do visit comicbookschool.com where Buddy Scalera is telling everyone and helping get the word out about Eternal Con. He's helping get the word out about other artists in the community of comic bookism. You know, it's like an ism now. And, um, or it's always been an ism. Nevertheless, some of us who are members of the comic book school will be at Eternal Con as panelists. What a wonderful opportunity, right? For us. Um, I will be there. Of course, Buddy Scalera, comic book school concierge, uh, will be there. Some of my other friends, the real, the surreal Ori, who is an amazing writer. My writing hero, she is an outstanding writer and she also does consultations on how to actually create a plan with your writing. There's a system to it. You don't just wake up and do this stuff, right? You have to have a system and she has this knockout system um, on how to really manifest and keep your audience's attention by the flow of your creative writing skills. So I, I hope to um, catch her panel as well, and I hope that you would too. And I believe there's some others. There'll also be a portfolio review. So this is really, really great. I, 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 I mean, can you not hear how ecstatic I am? I'm tripping over my own words. 
still capable of sketching, but I'm tripping over my own <laughs> words sharing all of this with our comic book school, having this amazing opportunity and, and bringing some of us along board to the panelists. I too will be there discussing my workshop, Five Senses, Five Senses to making sense of your, um, your artwork online. You know, basically utilizing the sensory system as a selling tool. So I had a couple artists who are helping me create some illustrations for my presentation and their work is pretty dope. I have two of them um, working in Israel. He's in Texas and he's knocking them out as well as, I hate to say her name wrong, but her last name is Rossi. So we'll go with that. A Rossi is also illustrating for me and they are almost done. Um, these new creations for me to add within my presentation, which allows me to grow the opportunity, not just all about Miriam's mark, but also allowing other people to be marked, which is our mission statement. So I'm uh, hope, helping other artists mark themselves while we grow and we grow with the help of Comic Book School and Buddy Scalera, which is magnificent. See how the total marketing system is working already? Though so with that being said, you know, the five senses of sailing is about the sensory system, using that as triggers to buy, to make buying impulsive, you know. You want things to happen, you want reactions. You, we have these um, things when you're writing content where you want to give your audience an action. So, let's say I write a description at the end of my description, my end sentence or might say buy now. That's the action. That's what I want my customer to do. I want them to buy now. I might have a sketch that I've done and I might say you can go online and you can get a free copy of this sketch to download for yourselves. And my action, if I was to upload this into my server for you to download, the button would only say download. That is the action. I want you all to be able to recognize how certain triggers or words can be used or even images can be used so that you too can create a trigger, an action from your audience. So that they too can move along using their own sensory systems to buy your artwork, buy your comic book. And just, you know, basically grow as you, you know, engage with them. Even if it isn't so much as buying, you might want them to subscribe to your channel. That's the action. As long as you know it, what it is that your goal is creating that in your action and your end goal. The other parts is figuring out how to trigger their sensory systems so that those actions can be your tools to grow in your industry. And I know it's like, what? I never even thought of that. I mean, psychology is a thing. We are so, you know, Sometimes people are like, oh, well, psychology isn't real, or I'm against it, I would never go to therapy, or anything like that. Um, but the reality, or the bigger picture, is there is a psychology of just about everything. And there's definitely a psychology of sales. There's definitely one for that. Even when you go to the grocery store, they have options for you when you go to purchase your stuff. Are you going to get a basket? Are you going to get a big old cart? The psychology of making that choice is a psychology of sales. The only difference I'm going to show you is how those different tools can be manipulated online targeting your artwork as the cart or the basket give all of it away. Who 
foot, you know? It's not that way. That's what I'm trying to do here. I want more of you all to come to Comic-Con and see what it is I have to talk about. What am I going to share? What is this big old presentation? Who is the illustrators? What did they draw and how? How will that even go together in a Comic-Con? Hmm. I don't know. I just hope that these different things are seen, enjoyed, and you know, that it grows, of course, that more people become interested in this philosophy of a tool. You know? That's my goal. Grow. My goal is to grow, mark, use markers, and have more people be you know, found online. As I'm drawing Ray Fisher as Cyborg, you know, he had a mission too. I mean, he was kind of offstandish initially. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I don't like anybody. You know, he was kind of grumpy in the movie in Justice League, but Eventually, he cracked a little more with his emotions. And as he did, that change in his behavior psychologically brought more people to love him, enjoy him, and guess what else? More people were willing to go to the movie. More people were willing to go see the movie. If more people go see the movie, that is a sale increase, a conversion is happening. And psychologically, his emotional changes were a tool. Think of it that way. Think of it that way on how DC was able to just change some of his behaviors in the last of the Justice League movies, and in that, he stole the show and more people became both interested in Ray Fisher and interested in going to see Justice League as a movie or seeing it, depending on when it came out. You know, some of them came out during the actual pandemic of the COVID-19, so some people had to stream it while the other came out in theaters and you were able to go into the theaters and see it. Well, you know, of course we have all those different HBOs and Cinemax and whatnot. So if you wanted to see an old movie, you might have to still buy it. That's still a purchase, right? And it's like, wow. That behavior change created change in a great deal of people created more people interested in watching him in his role as Cyborg. Now, I can only imagine, you know, now that there is this Ray Fisher versus Warner Brothers, you know, did more people become more engaged with Ray Fisher? Or more people chanting, backing him, supporting him while he goes through, you know, this or deal with Warner Brothers? I say yes. I think they were. There were more people who were willing to watch and support Ray Fisher during this time. I mean, I believe Ray Fisher just completed taping. I won't say just, but recently completed taping uh, the historical film that'll be coming out in New Year's of 2022, um, Women of the Movement. Now that show, in that show, or um, he'll be playing Gene Mobley. Gene Mobley would have been the stepfather of Emmett Till. Gene Mobley is, you know, with the mother of Emmett Till, who was a civil rights activist once her son was murdered. And the role is right on time, I would say. 
I heard an interview, uh, I think it was called the Faruqi Brothers, where um, Ray Fisher had discussed how this role as Gene Mobley really, really was like, you know, a pivotal role for him while he's going through this Warner Brothers ordeal because of what it stands for the timing is perfect for him because he has a racial fight of his own happening with Warner Brothers playing the role of a icon a civil rights leader a civil rights leader's husband mate um, at the same time it, it gives volumes to his performance. He connects emotionally to Gene because he's going through what he's enduring um, with Warner Brothers. If you don't know what happened, please do your research, read about it, um, watch some of the videos that are out there, and you know, give your give your spill in the comment area. Tell what you think um, is going on, how you feel about it. But do definitely do some research on your own. But it is a racial ordeal happening that has happened um, with Ray Fisher that's put, again, Cyborg um, in the role of Cyborg on hold uh, with Warner Brothers. It's not the director, people. It's Warner Brothers. Totally different. So, anywho, say all that to say psychological psychology matters in the roles that are being played and if you know he Ray Fisher can connect with this current role on women of the movement imagine what you can do if you connect it in other ways to your real life to your real life decision making skills, patterns, and how that can psychologically do things for you in growth and connection, connectivity. I mean, of course, I'm not in any kind of way saying that this role as Gene Mobley is a selling tool. That's not what I'm saying. It's a historic um, film depicting real life. However, psychologically, Ray Fisher is going through some things with Warner Brothers that is going to, I, I would say, or perceive that his role and his acting skills are probably so entwined that it's so, it, it's going to enhance and show in his emotions on screen because of what he's going through with Warner Brothers and how it does connect for um, what's happening or what had happened at that time. You know, the basis of racism, more so back then. Um, all in all, I can't wait to see Ray Fisher in his new play, his new role. And oh, I can't wait, you know. He has an amazing skill to show his emotions when he is acting facially. You can definitely capture his facial expressions really, really well. And it's just so dope to see that I'm just like, yo, imagine what it may be like now with his role after going through what he has endured with his employer, or prior employer. I don't know if he was let go. I believe he was, but don't quote me. Do your own research. But yeah, check it out and see that. But let's say, just for conversation's sake and tying it back in, I wanna tie that into Eternal Con. I wanna tie that back into my discussion on the five senses to sell and I want to hope that connecting these dots will allow you all to see it a little differently so 
let's say that, you know, you have your five senses. You have your smell, you have your sound. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> your, you have your taste, uh, sight, sound, taste, sight, hearing. What's left? Feeling. Feelings. You have your feeling. Or not so much your emotional feeling, but you're touching stuff, you know, touching stuff, right? And I feel like with Cyborg, he's the best person for me to draw on Sketch Show today because of his differently able when it comes to those five senses. He doesn't react the way others would because he's cyborg, right? I mean, he's differently able, but that's something to consider in regards to the five senses. He's not going to be my example in, during the presentation or panel on Saturday, but I can kind of utilize him a little bit today. Giving it, you know, some fan fiction. This is not, <laughs> yeah, although I did draw him, he's not my character in any kind of way. He is still the character, respectively, of, you know, the team of individuals and the company that originally created him. Um, <laughs> Warner Brothers. You see. Anyway, um, in regards to five senses, in you know the sensory systems and re and how it connects to a cyborg i would say just going with sight cyborg has an eye that is mechanic one one eye is mechanicalized or what have you and the sight may be computer generated it may be um, extremely different in my sight, heck, if someone has 20-40 vision, cyber sight is totally different than theirs, totally different than a 20-20 vision person as well. Differences are real, and being capable of re realize that, realizing that differences are real, you can realize that selling techniques are real too. I want you to take that into consideration now because the World Wide Web is online now more than they had ever been. And with those being the things that has changed since the pandemic has come, I would only hope that we can strategize for a person who is differently able to be able to still shop online frequently or as frequently as a person who has 20-20 vision that is also shopping online. You know the whole ADA compliance? It would be great to be able to ensure that we're meeting those measures somehow. And while doing so, this uh, cyborg that sees different would be able to visualize themselves not just shopping online in a computer, but maybe they'll have the experience to feel as if they are in the store themselves. Pandemic is over, and we are back in the store shopping like we used to. We are at the boutique, and we are having a great time. There's no mask involved, and it's outstanding. Um, you know, there's still some changes. The new normal has set itself in place and everybody is, you know, living la vida loca. Nevertheless, while doing that, the experience of shopping online feels so real, you don't even realize you're not really physically anywhere beyond your home. Wouldn't that be magnificent? You felt like, dang, I didn't go nowhere. <laughs> I'm still home. I'm still in my pajamas. Damn, I thought I was there. Because
because as a disciple, you feel so amazing, you feel so magnificent, that you feel like you were invited to a store to shop in person. Now don't get me wrong, I am in no kind of way saying, create your style uh, online to make people shop look like you're a real estate agent. I don't want anyone to feel as though they're supposed to take their studio and just, you know, do all the things that real estate agents have been doing for some years now to give an online tour. That's no way what it is that I want you to do. That's not the goal here. And, but I do want you to, you or your customers, to feel as though they are on a tour in your store online. I want them to see beyond their differently able abilities and still be able to conjure their senses so that you can create a strategy of financial financial security if you want to make sense you want to make financial sense why aren't you triggering people to buy and if you are whew, you're way ahead of the game but if you aren't let's get you in the game I think it's only right I think it's only fair I think it'll be fun magnificent enjoyable and of course while the whole wide world is online it's necessary I'd love for a you know opportunity to allow a you know cyborg to feel as though he's touching the, the book you know touching your sketchbook he's touching your illustrations he's touching your new comic book and it feels as if it was straight off the press and he's ready to just be like, oh, I gotta read this now, I'm gonna buy it, how do I get it, how can I download it and get it into my PC? Do you sell it as a downloadable? Can I get this right here, right now? Can I get this shipped to me? You know, those kinds of things. But while they're online in your online store, it feels as though they're really in the bookstore trying to make this purchase and it's such an anxiety high that they want everything right now. It's like, oh my God, I'm ready today. Let's get this done now. Hurry, 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 hurry. Just doing some shading. I mean, of course, I'm at the side of the beach. I'm on a family vacation with my family, and they're having fun in the background. And we're having a good time at the indoor pool. The thing is, when you're an illustrator, sketchbook, pens and pencils, camera, and happiness is all you really need. The willingness to do. Sometimes we have, you know, not really too willing, but sometimes you just need the willingness to do. If you willingly want to do it, you'll do it. I willingly wanted to do it. And I'm really excited. So, again, as I say my spell, I really, really, really am excited to go to an eternal con. I'm really, really excited that Ray Fisher be there. I mean, <sighs> am I doing too much? Is it just all about him? No, Ray Fisher is not the only person that'll be there. Dean Kane from Lois and Clark. Hey, Superman! Yes, he will be there too. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my darling. He will be there as well. 
So that's exciting. You know, Sonya Blade from Mortal Kombat. The lady who plays her, Carrie Ann Haskins, will be there as a celebrity guest. Woo! Ciao! Jackson Bostwick of Captain Marvel will be there. So, like, you know, it's star studded. These are some of my favorite characters. There's more people that will be there. I'm just listing a few. You want to know more, you have to go to eternalcon.com to see who the other guests are and buy yourself a ticket as well so that you can attend and see me as a panelist as well as see these people. My favorites. Dean Kane. Hey, what's up? Buddy's Galera from Comic Book School. And Deadpool. Hey. What's up? Kiri and Husky. Hey. What's up? Captain Marvel. Yo. What's up? You know what I'm saying? You know. Am I riding here? Of course, Ray Fisher. What up? What? So, you know, all these amazingly great people will be there, and I get to be there. I'm like, oh my god, what did I do to deserve anything like this? I saved the pencil, that's for sure. Oh man, that's exciting. I totally saved the pencil for a very long time. And I know this was not the path that my parents wanted for me. I saved the pencil and I saved the computer. My, my mom used to tell us as we were kids to go into computer technology. I was like, no, I want to be a medical examiner. That's not what I want to be. But then I came across Mr. Edelman's class and it feels like I've never left this <laughs> class. I just keep finding new ways to, you know, redevelop and grow it. Um, Mr. Edelman was my computer teacher in high school back in the day and um, there was only one computer that had the internet in my class way back then. I went from a typing classroom to a computer classroom so the bandwidth wasn't too strong in any kind of way to put everybody online. But I got to be the girl online and it was really great and I got to help um, with the school newspaper as well as some of my work was published in um, other newspapers from the same guy. Uh, my journalism grew. My interest in learning more about Adobe software, uh, computer graphics grew. And I had computer when I was in like elementary school as well, but it wasn't as in depth back then. Um, but it still grew from that time all the way to high school and then taking me through college and until now 20 something odd years later I know I'm only 26 I know but you know 20 some odd years later I am still manipulating and growing and now I'll be a presenter at Eternal Con, and I'm really excited to do it. Each time someone asks me or talks to me about being a presenter or talking or giving a workshop, I'm always super excited. Who wouldn't be, you know, for these kind of opportunities to land themselves? Um, I'm always like super with it. Like, oh my God, me? You want me to talk to people? Well, I'll be talking about it. Yes. Yes, I will. I'll talk to them. And I'm really, really like, how they ever choose me? Right. I stayed the pencil. My shana. I stayed the pencil. Ha, ha, ha. And, and I'm going to be honest. 
I remember my bonus mom used to, say, used to tell people she don't want that much. She just want to draw. She just want to be on her computer. She don't want that much. She don't want that much. That's all. That's what she would say. And she was so honestly true. It was her opinion and it was the truest opinion out there. <laughs> and I will honestly say, I just want to draw. I just want to do it with my computer teach sometimes and do a workshop and it feels really great to do so again as I'm wrapping up my sketch I hope that you enjoyed it you're enjoying so far what I've done and that you can come see us me in the comic book school gang Marion's Mark and Company or Marion'sMark.com and the Eternal Con crew in Long Island, New York on August 7th and August 8th, 2021, Saturday and Sunday. Go to eternalcon.com. It's E for eternal. T is in time. E is in everybody. <laughs> R as in right now. N as in now. A is in all y'all. <laughs> L is in, I don't know. L is in, love it. C as in comic. O as in obviously. And N as in now. N and now just goes together. Dot com to buy your tickets. Of course. I'm, uh, you know, I'm with it. And we'll see you all there. And I'm wrapping up my sketch. Just do a little more shading of Gray Fisher as the Justice League's cyborg. Because he's going to come back. They're going to, you know, take accountability for their actions, work on themselves, and be like, okay, we were wrong. We messing up. We were bad. Nobody's gonna pop them on their hand. They're gonna go to like a class or something that creates awareness. I mean, in my Obama hope, I'm figuring this all out for them, you know. In my Obama hope, they're gonna go to a class about awareness. They're gonna apologize. And Cyborg, the movie, will be back on in no time. Cyborg will be a part of the Flash series movie as well. And another Justice League with Cyborg included with Ray Fisher as the actual person playing the character too will be a part of the everything. I'm here for it, you know. I'm figuring it all out. Just in case like there was somebody missing at a meeting that did not uh, add in how these things can manifest itself. Here's the plan. Create a plan. <laughs> Create a class where you can really figure out how you can manifest yourself as a better person. Creating your awareness on what you say, how you say it, so that you can say it nicer, better, and really, you know, work on those inner issues of acceptance and that equity from I to me is formed at a better way that's more comfortable for people of color to feel comfortable within your workplace, within your company. Because I don't know why the behaviors of one or the behavior of one or two or a few individuals is speaking volumes for an entire entity. Um, but from what I'm understanding, it, this has been a thing or a problem for years. And I commend Ray Fisher for standing up and speaking out about it, especially when he, um, although his role as cyborg is extremely large he explains that he doesn't have a, a large portfolio 
of rules that he's clean. And sometimes that could be a really good thing, you know, it's like, uh, I have this one rule that I'm magnificent in. I don't need a thousand of them. Um, but, you know, with that being said, he didn't stay silent. He didn't allow that part of his career to hush him. So, big shout out to Ray Fisher for, you know, speaking up. And I hope that it really, really works out for him and all his fans and for people who might be you know afraid to speak out i hope that his story and this journey allows people to use their sentence senses a little differently uh gauge their emotions a little better so that they can be a little better so they can be braver and that i hope that sound of the voice that comes from him radiates so wildly and so loudly that it allows other individuals to vibrate emotionally so that their accountability and their decision making can quit, they can apologize, and then from that apology, they can move forward with the next part of their lives and their careers and the, the DC extended universe can continue to extend rather than what it's doing right now in regards to cyborg's position so this is what we've gotten so far and i hope that you like it this is it here you have it mariamsmark.com and my illustration of ray fisher as cyborg i hope you like it here you go thanks for tuning in to the sketch show on mariamsmark.com's channel please like subscribe share and also write down in the comments what you like about my artwork my style or what you would like for me to draw next would you be like would you like to be my next person to be illustrated let me know your story tell me in the comments i look forward to sketching with you all soon Toodles.